we cannot avoid asking ethical questions about the means that we use to create our wealth, as well as about the nature of the goods and services that we create, and also how they are distributed. And these are questions that take us beyond conventional economics to the core values and worldviews of a society. What weight should we give to future generations, what economists call the social discount rate? And how do we attach weights to the lives of individuals who are richer or poorer than ourselves, what is called equity weighting? These are ethical questions. Economists disagree, as we've been reminded, about action on climate change, and the various arguments reduce, in essence, to three. What is the appropriate discount rate to be applied in our models? What are the damage costs of climate change? And how likely are the most catastrophic outcomes of climate change? Now, each of these questions revolves around matters of personal judgment, judgments which take us beyond observable or predictable realities and about which the science is therefore either silent or deeply uncertain. Now, in seeking to govern the climate, humanity is attempting something that has never before been attempted. The meeting next month in Copenhagen is about attempting the global governance of the global atmosphere. And Ban Ki-moon, the UN Secretary General, when he opened the Bali Conference in December 2007, the conference that launched the Bali Action Plan which sets out the steps for achieving a post-2012 follow-up to the Kyoto Protocol. In his opening address, he said, and I quote, climate change is the defining challenge of our age. The science is clear. Climate change is happening. The impact is real. The time for action is now. Now, I find this language interesting, even disturbing. Perhaps by seeing climate change as, quote, the defining challenge or the mother of all problems, a mega problem awaiting a mega solution, we are currently creating a new discourse to replace the failed meta-narratives of enlightenment progress. The globally dominant ideologies of the nation state and the liberal market have both let us down. And just when some postmodern writers were casting suspicion on such modernist meta-narratives, we find ourselves creating new ones. Climate change has become an overarching meta-narrative that subsumes several individual problems, such as the loss of biodiversity, endemic poverty, food security, the use of non-renewable resources and unsustainable uh, energy use. Now, all these, while being interconnected, remain distinct and important issues in themselves. While there are many synergies, there are also trade-offs which have to be made. Professor Mike Hilm, the founding director of the Tyndall Center for Climate Change research in the UK invites us to consider a world 50 years from now, say 2060, in which optimistically the global greenhouse gas concentration has stabilized at between 450 and 550 parts per million. Global temperature levels may well be contained to less than two degrees centigrade and sea level rise to less than one meter. Professor Hume then raises the question, and I quote, in this imagined future, we may have come close to securing our primary goal of restabilizing global climate, but will the world be a better place? In 2060, we will still live in a world with wars, poverty, inequality, hunger, and disease. Cyclones, droughts, and floods will continue to cause this death and destruction. The mere restabilizing of climate need not necessarily help in reducing any of these material afflictions relative to today's experiences. 
it's difficult to see any reason why in this future climate-stabilized world, our population will be lower, our ecological footprint smaller, our poverty reduced, our GDP greater, our life expectancy longer, or our happiness enriched relative to any other possible future world. What is the human project ultimately about?" Unquote. Now, I think that Professor Hume is on to something important and interesting. Because climate change is an idea as well as a physical phenomenon. And moving beyond the language of problem and solutions to exploring the interaction between our cultural ideas, our symbols, our behavior, and physical reality, we can use the way that people talk about climate change as a mirror into which we look and discover our individual and collective values and worldviews. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.